Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to episode 79 of the Pentagon Challenge, where we try to guarantee our place in the quarterfinals of the Copa Libertadores. Uh, there's no other games to be talking about, so we can head straight in. However, I will uh, take one quick update of my uh, former clubs and how they're getting on. So uh, Vasco da Gama, Cape Town, uh, are fifth placed with one game to go in the South African National First Division. So I pretty much have to say they are uh, pretty much uh, set for the year. They're, no, they're not going anywhere. In the Premier League, it looks like Jomo Cosmos are going to win the title for a very rare time. So perhaps it was a good idea to avoid the sundowns. And then over in China, we can tell you that Shenshua are down in 11th place in the Chinese Super League. That is extremely disappointing. Uh, I lay the finger of blame at the manager, who I did give praise to previously. He let go of both of our goalkeepers, uh, Lu Dansuo and Du Jia, in the same season. But Du Jia went for a pip, you know, pennies, really, and he's doing a reasonable job as Guangzhou's new goalkeeper. So uh, that's another case of me being me being disappointed with my predecessors or my my successors sorry i'm disappointed with how they're getting on but hopefully uh, vasco de gama cape town in particular will eventually get promoted back into the south african premier league so now uh, i've rotated my team slightly i haven't had to make too many changes but uh, bearing in mind we have a real estate championship game coming up uh, we're going to be carefully rotating the players that uh, did not so well in the last game and then keeping the guys who I'm happy with and who have the right amount of fitness. So this is what I've got. Um, my bench can only have seven players of course so uh, everyone else have to wait until Rio uh, and the Maracanã to play uh, after um, having probably more of a rest than they would have liked. However, Monterey, their season's well and truly over and they have to travel over 5,000 miles to get to this point. So I can only hope their training has been uh, disrupted. They've had to make the flight within the four days as opposed to us. We could go to Mexico uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it didn't affect us uh, training-wise or time-wise that we had to make that journey. So other games uh, out there today, we've got Boca against Colo Colo, Palmeiras against Pachuca, Olympia uh, at home to Santos and then of course the live live come here uh, they've gone for the same formation let's just see how their players are shaped up uh, he's okay not so good very bad not so good not so good and okay um, how about the right and left backs um, mm, it depends really uh, I am satisfied we can break the guys down we were so much better in the first leg but we switched off just as we made our breakthrough and that's something they'll have to uh, be dealt with in this game uh, I do feel I've the right amount of players uh, fit uh, because I rested them and then those who played really well in the first leg they should know uh, what to do in this game so without further uh, time wasting let's head straight into the game and uh, let's see how we get on here we go and there we go, it is the home side to get the kick off and this will basically be just like my Brazilian Cup final where we were against the uh, underdogs and it needed home advantage to get the job done as we struggled in the first leg um, seemingly the pressure got to our head so we're all on our own, the other games are taking place later but disappointingly nothing much has happened shots not hitting the target and um, not too impressed to say the least uh, so we'll try and mix things up a little bit. Um, now here we go, Barrios with the right foot finds Vinicius and unfortunately that's gone wide. Uh, demand more, that's what I want to see, but Monterey look comfortable in defence. Now they've got their own set piece, cleared, not very far though, Mur Mureshe, uh passed it back to an offside Larin. So not an exciting game at the moment, so come on, we need to do better than this. Uh, gentlemen, this is not good. An extremely boring first half. Even we're on a, even though we're on extended, we have to change this. And that was a terrible goal kick. But Barrios thankfully has the ball. And here's Marquinhos Cipriano, the top scorer in the club, despite being only a lone uh, player. And Ivo does get a low cross into Carreira, but Sifuentes uh, says uh, was uh, right. Uh, on target there to catch the ball but now it looks like uh, we have an opportunity Cipriano nearly got in behind Guedes is in a good position and Carreira again 
with an opportunity to put us ahead hits the crowd instead of the net and now it's the final chance before the minute of stoppage time takes place Carlos good good hit it's nicely dived to the keepers left there but now we've Cipriano back turned and it looks like we have the right strategy but the no the lack of goals means that we still go through on that away goal but we have to be really careful uh, to ensure our dominance uh, is met on the scoreline we can't afford to go for broke and then concede an away goal ourselves so I'll just say there is room for improvement um, like they haven't done that much have Monterey but we'll have to just uh, monitor them and make sure they don't get any more shots that could uh, potentially break our hearts uh, Larine Giuliano far post cleared by Cesar Martinez um, yeah, some of those guys are exhausted. They need to make some substitutions. But here we go with our players in good shape. Karecha may need to come off soon. He goes all the way out to Cipriano. But the finesse again found the keeper exactly where he was standing. Um, are we going to push forward now? Let's see, see if we can get there. An incredible performance. It's lacking goals. Here come Monterey. Renteria to Giuliano. And it's an away goal for Sevalos. Absolutely terrible defending. And Vasco now have to score. And I cannot believe what we are seeing here. We cannot afford to go out at this stage again. It's going to be a long way to wait. 12 months is such a long time, especially in Brazilian football. But we could go 2-0 down if we're not careful. Oh, what a save by Bernal. He was ready for that one. But, my God, this is just... You know, intense. We cannot afford this. No doubt about it. We've been better in most departments, but we have not scored. And uh, Leandro clears. Alvarado picks up. Medina on fumes finds Arau. Sevalos gives it away. Now we have to make a change. This is not good. Not not good. Um. Mm, I think we'll take Leandro off. Put Centurion in here. Uh, he prefers being deep line playmaker. And we'll accept that. But perhaps we need to bring on a striker. Um, oh, damn it. Did I not name one? Uh-oh. Um, oh, yeah. I've brought on the wrong Leandro. That's stupid anyway. Uh, Correcio will have to come off. Fonseca is the only one I have left. This is my fault. I haven't played a striker on our bench. And we only have the one available by default. So that's uh, careless for me. I made a big mistake not naming a, a striker on my bench. But it looks like we're giving away the ball cheaply. You might go route one. And uh, Sifuentes collects easily from the free kick. That's to give away. Cipriano to Fonseca. That's, it's a careless pass. Giuliano to Larin and Rene Renteria could win it all. Oh, thankfully not. A bit of a jumble in the box and we do get rid eventually. But my goodness gracious, how have we not turned up for this? I am appalled. I am disgusted and we have to do something to change all this. So um, we just keep changing the instructions rather than bringing on any subs. Come on, do what, I'm, do what I ask. Um, all right, looks like we have to go for broke. Uh, Leandro, shadow striker. That's all I have. Uh, Cipriano will have to go attacking. And I'm in panic mode now. I have no options except that last substitute. We only have 15 minutes to break down exhausted Monterey. I don't understand how they haven't even made one substitution. Is their manager... Uh, is he arrogant or something? Is he so confident in his players? Maybe they have their chance now. Larin to Carlos. Barrios, help him. Ivo not getting forward. He decides to pass to Carlos. But it, it is Emerson Fonseca to rescue. And they finally make a change. But we now require extra time. Unless there is another response. Thank goodness for the keeper. Bernal got down where he might have gotten hurt. But now Fonseca to Cipriano. Smacking a, an opponent on the forehead. Alvarado 
ends the highlight. But who is their substitute? Uh, Candido Martinez or something. I didn't quite read it. Um, where is he? Um, Candido Ramirez. Sorry. That's poor for me. Um, there we go. Candido is now being marked up. But now it looks like we're in more trouble. Ramirez. Can he be the substitution of... Oh, I, I lost my vocabulary again. Could he be the substitution of dreams they make? Final changes now. Uh, we have to drop deeper and shorter passing just for a little bit. See what happens. Vinicius header. Fonseca to Cipriano. Cutting inside. And Gabino to Anda. Trips him up in the box. The referee has made the right decision. But the pressure lies on the shoulders of Francisco Carlos. He's only a young man. But there is no hesitation. He drills it into the middle of the net. And again, Vasco da Gama seemed to pull out a result from the brink. And now we have to defend and defend and defend some more. We are nearly in the quarterfinals of the Copa Libertadores. A key tournament in our ambition to beat the Pentagon Challenge. But Centurion smacks one wide. We have two and a quarter minutes uh, left on the clock. The additional time will start very shortly. Fonseca. Low cross. Didn't find a teammate. That's okay. We're going to go low crossing now. Guedes. Into Borges. Maybe no. Not quite. Martinez. Given away. But we get it back for just a second. And Cipriano with a calculated foul has given Monterey their final opportunity and it's hit the bar! Oh, what a shot! How did it not go in? The keeper didn't know what uh, he had to do there but now Mar Monterey nearly there, no. 15 seconds, Cipriano will run. Fonseca has a big, big uh, cake to eat, I'm sure, with the heroics coming off the bench but it is Francisco Carlos's penalty that ensures Vasco sneak into the quarterfinals it was a good performance to come from that deficit to win but that was my fault I, I but I didn't really set up the guys particularly well they figured out our strategy they put us under a lot of pressure but we did get there in the end. Their mistake was playing all the same players who were not fit to survive the 90. They could go for 75 but not for 90. And it looks like the penalty award was uh, a poor one. As uh, the referee is getting criticism with a, re a rating of 6.6. .6, so perhaps we got lucky. I felt it was a penalty. There was minimal contact with the ball. It was all with the man. And uh, De La Torre is distraught at having lost and uh, it's going to take a while for a Mexican club to win a South, African or South American tournament and uh, we'll just have to uh, prove that Brazilians are still the dominant force and uh, we don't know who would play next but we'll try and figure out that draw as soon as we can let me see, uh, there's a squad registration there but we don't know who we play next so until that time I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you for the next episode which will probably be a highlights reel of the Rio de Janeiro State Championship final. So thank you very much for your time and uh, the draw will be made on the 9th. So we'll see if we can get that draw for you done and uh, see who we get. So bye for now. And in a close draw, Vasco draw River Plate for the quarterfinals. And uh, that's a massive draw as far as I'm concerned. They're one of the best teams remaining in the tournament. And uh, even though they lie seventh in the Argentine Premier League, uh, they're in very, very good form. Only losing uh, once in the last uh, few months anyway. Like there's a loss in uh, February when the season began so they started poorly now they're in excellent form only losing to Cologne uh, in the 13th of April Premier League match and then they thrashed Alianza uh, to qualify easily from Group G uh, but against uh, Velez one of their domestic rivals they got the narrowest of victories and that got them through so if we're ready then they certainly will be just as ready so there's only one more game left to play 
Um, Flamengo will be waiting for Olympia of Paraguay or their rival Santos. Independiente will play Gremio. Uh, River against Vasco, as you saw. And then the shock of the tournament, Boca Juniors are out, thanks to Colo Colo. And they will play Pachuca in the quarterfinals. So perhaps my uh, fl- my prediction of a Mexican team not winning this tournament uh, it could still happen and uh, Pachuca did a massive massive favour for us uh, by beating Palmeiras so one less Brazilian club but Colo Colo on away goals knock out the champions but Olympia have uh, Santos on the back foot so that could be Flamengo in a very powerful position but uh, the Brazilians and the Argentines have all been separated, so that should make things very exciting indeed. So thank you once again for watching episode 79, and I'll see you for Botafogo in the Rio Championship.